Clan Kerr, one of the great riding clans of the Scottish borders, boasts a rich and intriguing history that spans centuries. With various renditions of their name, such as Kerr, Kerr, Carr, and Carre, this ancient clan has left its mark on Scottish heritage. Let's delve into the captivating saga of Clan Kerr and uncover the tales of honor, rivalry, and enduring legacy. The origins of the Kerr name can be traced back to the Old Norse word KJRR, which means Marsh Dweller. It is believed that the Kerrs arrived in Scotland from Normandy, a French settlement of the Norse. Interestingly, a variant of the name can also be found on the west coast of Scotland, particularly on the island of Arran, deriving from the Gaelic word CR, meaning dusky. According to family tradition, the Kerrs claim a Norman origin, attributed to two brothers, Ralph and Robert, also known as John. These brothers migrated from Lancashire to Roxburgh in Scotland. While it remains unclear which brother was the elder, the senior branch of the family, known as the Kerrs of Ferniehurst, asserts descent from Ralph. On the other hand, their rivals, the Kerrs of Sesford, trace their lineage back to John. As the influence of Clan Kerr grew steadily throughout the 14th and 15th centuries, they became crown vassals with considerable power. By the time of the fall of the Douglases in the mid-15th century, the Kerrs had established themselves as influential figures. In 1451, Andrew Kerr of Sesford received a charter to the barony of Old Roxburgh, and was appointed warden of the marshes. The family secured their hold on the barony and castle of Sesford with a charter in 1493. Sir Andrew Kerr of Ferniehurst, another prominent figure in the clan's history, received a royal charter to the barony of Oxnam, and was appointed warden of the Middle Marches in 1502. This prestigious royal office passed to another Sir Andrew Kerr of the Sesford lineage in 1515, who had fought at the Battle of Flodden two years earlier. Tragically, he lost his life near Melrose while escorting the infant James V to Edinburgh in 1526. The Kerr family continued to amass honours and titles. Mark Kerr, grandson of Sir Andrew Kerr of Sesford, had his lands of New Battle and Preston Grange erected into the Barony of New Battle in 1591. In 1606, he was created Earl of Lothian. However, this title failed to pass on when his son died without male heirs in 1624. Meanwhile, Sir Andrew Kerr of the Ferniehurst line received the title Lord Jedburgh in 1621. The Kerrs further expanded their peerage when Sir Robert Kerr, descended from a younger son of Sir Andrew Kerr of Ferniehurst, was created Earl of Roxburgh in 1616. Adding to their array of honours, Sir William Kerr, son of the Earl of Ancrum, was granted a new earldom of Lothian in 1631. His son, Robert, was elevated to the rank of Marquis and also inherited the earldom of Ancrum upon his uncle's death. Subsequently, the Roxburgh title was advanced to a dukedom in 1707, partly in recognition of their support for the political union of Scotland and England. The complex rivalry between the two branches of the Kerr family adds another layer of intrigue to their history. The Ferniehurst branch aligned themselves, with young James V, while the Sesford branch supported the Douglases. In the subsequent reign, Ferniehurst remained a staunch supporter of Mary, Queen of Scots, even after her flight into English captivity. However, Sir Walter Kerr of Sesford led his men against the Queen at the Battle of Langside in 1568. The long-standing feud between the two branches finally came to an end when William Kerr of Ferniehurst married and Kerr of Sesford in 1631. Their descendants are the present Marquis of Lothian, preserving the union of the two rival branches within the clan. The Kerrs have produced notable figures throughout their history. The first Marquis of Lothian served as Lord Justice General of Scotland and left a legacy of five sons and five daughters. Among his children, Lord Mark Kerr stood out as a distinguished professional soldier, known for his strong sense of personal honor and quick temper. Lord Mark Kerr fought in several duels during his military career and eventually rose to the rank of general. In 1745, he was appointed as the Governor of Edinburgh Castle. 
The second Marquess of Lothian was honored as a Knight of the Thistle in 1705. The Kerr family's involvement in significant historical events continued when Robert Kerr, one of the sons of the third Marquess, tragically became the only high-ranking individual on the Hanoverian side to be killed at the Battle of Culloden in 1746. His eldest brother, the fourth Marquess, commanded three squadrons of cavalry at Culloden and survived to serve under the Duke of Cumberland in France in 1758. The Kerrs extended their influence beyond the realm of land and warfare. Sir Walter Talbot Kerr, a younger son of the seventh Marquess, excelled as a naval officer and rose to the rank of Admiral of the Fleet. He served as a naval lord at the Admiralty from 1899 to 1904, adding a seafaring legacy to the clan's illustrious history.